Here's PragerU to give the most bizarre reasons for erecting a monument to someone. Who was Robert E. Lee? Statues of great historical figures, like Robert E. Lee, are being torn down across America. What do great historical figures have to do with Robert E. Lee, the traitor who lost? Here are some facts about Lee that remind us why his statue should remain. Robert E. Lee was connected to George Washington through his father, Light Horse Harry Lee, Washington's cavalry commander, and his wife, Martha Washington's great-granddaughter. So there should be a monument to the guy because he was related to someone who fought alongside George Washington and had some connection to his wife? That's a pretty pathetic claim to fame and an absurd reason for retaining a monument. By that logic, Rob Schneider should get a Screen Actors Guild Award because he was in Muppets from Space with Andy McDowell who was in Beauty Shop with Kevin Bacon who actually won a Screen Actors Guild Award. Even I have a Kevin Bacon number of like four. Where's my SAG award? Lee's home at Arlington House was just 10 miles from Washington's Mount Vernon. Today, it is the site of Arlington National Cemetery. His house was within a 10 mile radius of Washington's and now it's on the site of Arlington Cemetery. This, in the minds of the guys behind PragerU, is a reason to have a huge statue to someone. After 30 years of military service, Lee led U.S. Marines to crush the attempted slave rebellion by radical abolitionist John Brown in October 1859. 21 co-conspirators had seized a federal armory, and all of them were killed or captured, including John Brown, who was tried and hanged for treason. So John Brown is the bad guy here? Does Prager U think slave rebellions are a bad thing and that crushing them is good? Apparently so if they think the guy who stopped said rebellion deserves a monument. And they call John Brown a radical abolitionist as though they think he just took abolitionism too far. I guess they are of the opinion that being only moderately anti-slavery is the much more reasonable position. The Prager folks think that seizing an armory in rebellion against slavery is worse than slavery itself. What is even the point of this video? Who does Prager U think will be convinced with this? Do they think the folks who don't want a statue memorializing a guy who fought for slavery are going to hear that he crushed a slave rebellion and say, oh well, that's different then. Consider my mind changed. Clearly this dude deserves to be honored in the public square. Lee deemed slavery a moral and political evil in any country, but considered it a greater evil to the white man than to the black race, since blacks are immeasurably better off here than in Africa. It's funny that PragerU has made videos saying that Democrats are the real bigots because they supported slavery and segregation in the 1800s. But now PragerU is approvingly quoting a Confederate general who said that slavery was good for black folks, actually. Conservatives say that supporting slavery was bad when they see it as an opportunity to criticize Democrats. But apparently fighting to preserve slavery is good when Democrats want to take down the monuments to the people who did that. It's almost as if the conservatives who make these arguments have no real principles other than just spiting Democrats. The argument that Western oppression is good because of all of the benefits of Western civilization has been used to justify every horror of oppression and colonialism. Dennis Prager himself has said that the British occupation of India is justified because they abolished sati. Apparently he thinks that this justifies centuries of exploitation. Let's say aliens invaded and enslaved all human beings, but they also gave us technology to cure all disease. Would that make the enslavement of humanity a good thing? Would that justify it in the mind of any reasonable person? Citing that quote from Lee also makes it look like the reason he fought for slavery was because he thought it was good for black folks, as though Lee was trying to do black folks a favor. It almost sounds like they expect black folks to want the monument to remain, as a way of saying, thank you General Lee for fighting to keep us enslaved. That was very kind of you. It's an awful shame that you lost and that we're not still slaves to this day. Do the folks at PragerU not understand that what they're saying has this absurd implication? Opposing secession, Lee foresaw no greater calamity for the country than a dissolution of the Union. But when Virginia seceded in a close vote, Lee resigned his commission. Despite offers to command Union forces, Lee opted to organize the defense of his native state. So he even had the opportunity to do the right thing and still decided to side with the bad guys. PragerU says that he opted to organize the defense of his native state as though his loyalty to slave masters was a noble virtue. After four years as Confederate commander, Lee became an icon of reconciliation upon his surrender. As president of Virginia's Washington College, he favored education for freed slaves but opposed their right to vote. Oh, how centrist of him. Lee died from a stroke in 1870 and is buried beneath Lee Chapel in what's now Washington and Lee University. 
his legendary warhorse Traveler rests in a plot nearby. So he has a chapel named after him, under which he was buried. That seems to me to be more than enough of a memorial to this guy. He doesn't need the gigantic one in Richmond. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.